Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Gosh, it seems like it's been a while, huh? Since we've seen each other. Not since my last project, sadly, right? But uh, my daughter said she likes to see her teacher's faces when they're teaching her. So I'm just adding a little bit uh, of that to this lesson. I don't know if it'll make much of a difference, but if, if it's helpful and if it makes us feel more connected, I'm all about it. So here we go. This is our man-made theme. We are cruising through these themes and the next one that I want to tackle uh, are all about things that are created by a person. So think about architecture or buildings, machines, I think about cars, anything that is made or manufactured by a person and not something that you find in nature, which is the theme we're just coming out of. So we're going to talk about collections and our project this week, I kind of want to get you ready for it by telling you a story both a story of a photographer and my story uh, that has to do with this photographer. So the person I want to introduce you to, his name is Tom Kiefer. And Tom is a photographer who lives in Arizona. He grew up, um, he's an American artist, and he spent most of his life in the California area running his own business where he had antiques and sold things and refurbished furniture and in his retirement he wanted to make enough money really to just sustain his photography practice as an artist. So he moved to Arizona, the southern part of Arizona where it meets the Mexico border and he bought a house and he got a job as a custodian at the Border Patrol building there where he lived and that job as a custodian gave him just enough money so that he could be a photographer and he his job his dream was to photograph the country and kind of tell the story of um, areas all over our country. Well I'm going to show you a couple of videos to show you what happened while he was living and working there and how it kind of changed the course of what he decided he was going to photograph and it became this beautiful project called El Sueño Americano. So take a look at these. They're, they're two short videos uh, I'm not really sure why the producers broke them up this way, but I think they're both really good. These were put out by the Saugatuck Center for the Arts a couple of years ago because Tom Kiefer was coming there. And so uh, they're both great. And I want to show you both because there's some different, different things in each one. Here we go. and I create my work with the camera. Three months after the attacks on September 11, I moved from Los Angeles, where I had lived the previous 20 years, to a small former copper mining town in southwest Arizona, not far from the U.S.-Mexico border. The plan was to buy a home, lower overhead, and use my new surroundings as a base to continue traveling around the country to photograph and find America through its landscapes, buildings, cultural markers, and detritus. To help fund this work, I took a part-time job a year and a half after moving here that would end up changing my life and my journey of America. I'm Tom Kiefer. This is El Sueño Americano, the American Dream. Okay, one more. In July 2003, I took a job as a janitor at a U.S. Customs and Border Patrol facility 30 miles from the U.S.-Mexico border. I worked there for 11 years. During my fourth year there, I became increasingly disturbed by the disposal of all the canned and packaged food the migrants carried with them across the desert. Given permission to bring that food to our local food bank, it was to my shock and horror to see what was also being thrown away. El Sueño Americano, the American Dream, are the belongings of migrants apprehended in the desert and taken into custody. Considered hazardous or non-essential, these items were confiscated and disposed during the first stages of processing. On 
I'm Tom Kiefer. This is El Sueño Americano, the American Dream. Okay, so that's a little touch on Tom Kiefer, who he is, and how this El Sueño Americano work came to be. So I have this link here for us to go take a look at his work, and I want to tell you about it. So imagine you are someone who lives in Mexico, and it's not safe for you there. You have to leave. And maybe you have children, maybe you're traveling alone, maybe you're going with some family members. But for me, I imagine myself, you know, in my situation now, I'm living somewhere, it's not safe, I need to get out uh, for whatever reason. And so I bring my children with me and I, I try to come to a better place, right? So there are, there are people who are coming into America, right? And they can only carry so much. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But what Tom was finding is while these people from Mexico were, were coming into the country, uh, the, um, at the checkpoint, all of the things that they had would be looked through and whatever was deemed non-essential or dangerous would be confiscated or taken from them. And so Tom was becoming aware of how much was being taken when he was looking at all the food. But then he started looking at, at the material items, too, and he just couldn't believe how much was being confiscated. And then the stories behind it. And then also is, you know, is are the things that he's photographing now, are, are they really non-essential and are they really dangerous? So he, with his artwork, he's asking some pretty important questions and I think this is kind of a hot topic right now, especially uh, with the immigration conversations that we have. It's a pretty political debate. So I want you to kind of have that context as you look at his images. These are all things that have been confiscated from people coming into America uh, at a checkpoint, right? And so they're coming in legally through an entrance point, but all of the, th all of the things that are... Um, that are photographed here are all things that the that our government in the U.S. has said these are dangerous or non-essential. Okay, so you can see in this example, it's a bunch of um, wallets, and you can read more about that if you want to. I'm just at Tom Kiefer's website, TomKiefer.com. These are the water jugs that they'll carry through the desert. So obviously, if you're walking through the desert, you're going to need to prepare and have water. So this is uh, one of the ways that you'll see them coming through with jugs of water duct taped just to keep them from um, breaking down and maybe even to try to insulate them a little bit. They wrap them with fabric and such too, but that's a big concern, right? If you're trying to literally walk across a desert, you have to stay hydrated. He does these little singles too. So the irony of this is how is this item dangerous or non-essential. I mean, I guess I can see that it's non-essential, but I think the beauty in it is that it, that was an item that someone thought was important enough to bring with them on a pilgrimage like this. Uh, and then when they get to the border, it, it got taken away. So there's a story in all of these items, which I think is really interesting. I'm just going to click through some of these so that you can see them. They're so personal, right? I mean, I, and you imagine if, if you had to flee in a hurry, you know, and you could only pick a few things because you know you had to carry them the whole way, you know, that that says a lot if these are the items that they're that they're choosing. So you can come back to this website and look at at some of these images. I think it's it's really fascinating and really interesting. And sometimes the pure volume of what of what they're collecting is kind of overwhelming to see. This as a mother strikes me because if I had my young children with me and I had carried their baby food the whole way and I need to feed my children and then somebody tells me it's not an essential thing, I would think that it kind of is. But yeah, it's definitely controversial, his work, which is another reason why I like it. Okay. 
So back to the story part, my story. So this is my, mostly these are my IB visual arts students from two years ago, because we teach IB visual arts every other year at Spring Lake. So these were my students a couple of years ago, and Tom Kiefer was coming to Saugatuck, and he was doing a workshop where he was going to present to small groups and walk us through his work, and it was a pretty big deal, right? So we booked a spot, and we went down. This is us in Saugatuck getting ready to go in to our workshop with Tom. Here we are viewing some of the work in the gallery. So these are those singles I was talking about. So sometimes he takes these photographs of just individual objects and then he displays them all together. I love the color in these. I think that's really pretty striking and, and pretty cool. And that each little window is a story into somebody's life. So here are my students uh, in the gallery, and this is Tom Kiefer. He came in and talked to us. He was telling us about these pieces of fabric here, uh, that those are usually made by the matriarchs of the family, and they're passed down um, generation to generation. And so those are obviously very personal you know, family items that are, are confiscated. Here are... Here we are again in the gallery. You might recognize some of these students. Okay, so then part of our workshop was we got to go into their space at the Saga Tuck Center for the Arts, and they encouraged us to bring what we would bring if we were in this situation where we had to immigrate somewhere, right? So um, you can see Chase brought his camera. Sam brought, like, his favorite flannel, and he has his camera as well because these guys are both really into photography. And people brought a lot of different items uh, to photograph because we basically were going through the process of uh, photographing like Tom does, co photographing our own collections, our own things that are near and dear to us. They also had several other things in the room, tables. There was a table over here where people are standing where all kinds of things were that we could collect and, um, and photograph while we were there. So you can see here, here's Tom and um, some of his people, and you can see this Annie Cooper is taking a picture of some things that she found on the table. So we had a little studio space set up with some lighting. Here's Jensen taking a picture. So here's the cool thing. After this whole workshop and, and he, sitting with him and having him present his work to us, we were we went to have lunch in Saugatuck and we were sitting here as a group of us and, and Tom was sitting over at this table over here and he was sitting all alone and I thought, oh my gosh, that's kind of sad, right? He's in from out of town. He lives in Arizona and here we are all having lunch together. So I walked over and I said, would you like to join us for lunch? And he said, sure. So he came over and sat with us and we ended up buying him lunch and having an amazing conversation with him and getting to know him on a much deeper level as an artist and as a photographer. He told us all about his, his life and why he does this work. And he was really, he's very shy and introverted. So I kind of felt bad after getting to know him better for going over my extroverted self and being like, hey, do you want to join us? But it was a day I'll never forget. It was a moment that my students will never forget because this is somebody who we came to see and the next thing we know we're having this really intimate experience with him eating a meal with him and and being able to ask him all kinds of questions about his work and letting him share his his story with us as a person and as a photographer so it was really cool so here's Tom and a group of students and a couple of moms who had come along it was really really quite a cool day Okay, so let's take his work. We'll talk a little bit more about it in a minute, but here's your question. How can you creatively photograph a collection of your own? So I would like you to go around your house and find something that is collected at your house and maybe it's someone else's collection and maybe you're like well I don't collect anything. Well maybe you can find a grouping of things in your house, a multiple grouping, you know, a, a group of things that has multiple pieces or components, and um, and I want you to photograph it, okay? So you might have to do a little bit of hunting, go around and see. Uh, if it was my collection, I probably would do some art supplies. I don't know if you can see 
the room behind me but this is my art room and I have a lot of cabinets full of art supplies and I think if it was me I'd probably um, tell the story of myself through um, photographing some art supplies all right so you'll have to tell whatever story you want to tell and what in using whatever objects you find all right so let's talk about a few tips okay lighting lighting is important you guys I know we keep talking about exposure and what kind of natural light do you have in the environment you're working with but these pictures I showed you when we were in Sagatuck um, this this is this is an example of studio lighting which some of you might have at home but it's probably going to be really rare for you to have studio lighting at your house but that doesn't mean you can't light your collection properly get a couple of lamps plug them in get next to a window and get a lamp on the other side I want you to be really thinking about lighting it's critical okay we are taking fine art photographs at this point so think about the lighting, the lighting is going to cast different shadows. It's going to hit the objects differently. You want to be careful of glare when you're when you're working with lighting, but pay attention to it. You can set up studio lighting without studio lights. Get a lamp on both sides, like I said, or get next to a window and then make sure you have another light source on the other side. Play around with it and really observe how the light is working with your objects as you take the pictures. All right. Think about background. You probably noticed in Tom Kiefer's work, his backgrounds are intentional. So when he had all of these combs that were pink and red, he picked a background that was pink. This looks like actually a canvas that he painted. So backgrounds are important. Whatever your collection is, you need to find something to put under it that makes sense and that highlights the collection. It might be a sheet, it might be a big piece of paper, it might be a piece of wood. It should make sense with your objects. This pink canvas makes sense with the objects that he has photographed here. It visually makes everything cohesive. You have a lot of variety here, a lot of different pieces. There's not necessarily a focal point, so you need to hold it all together with that background. It's, it's really important. Arrangement. How are you going to place your objects or your collection? I chose this image of Tom Kiefer's because I don't know if you noticed when we were clicking through earlier, but on the end he has all of these toothbrushes laying down in the same direction. And then he has all of these tubes of toothpaste kind of creating this visual line. I think there's a lot of energy in this photograph because it's creating this line that's moving across the the page or the screen that we're looking at right now so arrangement how you arrange them is really important you can see those combs that we were just looking at they were all kind of nestled in together uh, this one has more of a linear arrangement so think about how you're going to arrange them I think this arrangement here also speaks again to the volume of the stuff that gets taken from people as they're coming through so if if you're trying to make a visual story about the volume maybe you collect something and you're like I have a lot of this then you're arranging it in a way that makes it look like a lot is important if you're trying to show something and make it a little more sparse that's a different kind of arrangement right so think about that creativity leave room for beautiful surprises this was a piece that was hung on the wall in Sagatuck and I absolutely loved it not necessarily did I love this piece but I love that they framed this piece okay so you have to imagine that in the Sun of Arizona he has this big piece of brown paper that he's photographed all of these these pieces of makeup on and the Sun had bleached the paper and when they removed the items it had all of these beautiful shapes I love that and I love that he appreciated it enough to frame this piece of paper and put that in the gallery as well. So leave room for creativity and spontaneity. And I know some of this might seem a little bit um, rigid when you look at the photographs, but it doesn't have to be. And I think this is the perfect example of that. All right, so here are your requirements. I want you to creatively photograph a collection always be trying to think outside the box I'm giving you a framework but you can you can push it creatively for sure show your skill what is skill in, in photography it's lighting it's making sure it's um, composed 
really beautifully. Use your composition tips to do this. And craftsmanship, is it cropped properly? Uh, lighting, background, arrangement, creativity, we talked about all those things being really critical to get a strong image. Upload a man-made album to your Flickr account once you've done some, some work and there's the due date for you. I've had a couple people ask me, how many, how many pictures do you want me to take? There's not necessarily a quantitative number when it comes to this kind of work. I want you doing some exploring. I want you being, you know, experimental, leaving room for that creativity. And so if you've done, a, you know, a lot of different shots, put them in there for me to see. I'd love, I'd love to see your process. I'm really missing that part of the class where I'm, I'm able to see what you're doing along the way. So if you want to put in multiple pictures, great. If you are the kind of person who are going to, you're going to like high tune, edit and focus in on just a couple images, put a couple of beautiful images in there. Uh, it's up to you. Everybody's style is a little bit different, but that is your project for this week. I want to see how can you creatively photograph a collection thinking about all of those things that we can gather from Tom Kiefer's work and how can you tell a story showing whatever you decide to show. Uh, uh, really, it's a man-made, they're man-made things, but they're telling a human story behind them. So I'm excited to see what you do. Take more time to look through Tom Kiefer's work. I'll post the link to that website for you on Schoology. It's really um, impactful. And he has gotten a lot of publicity, obviously, because it's a hot topic politically, like I said. So, so, you know, some people don't like his work. Some people don't like the story that he's telling. Some people don't agree with him and what he's saying. He's become very empathetic to people coming into our country because he's seeing the experience that they've had. And uh, not everybody agrees with that. So take a look. Appreciate that work. Please take some beautiful photographs of collections you can find around your house and then get them in your Flickr album uh, and share out on our Schoology share out so you can see what other people are photographing too. Seniors, this is our last week together. Uh, I miss you. I don't know if I'm going to miss that last day in the classroom where I cry and cry and cry. If you've seen me, you know that the last day that seniors are in the building is a sad, sad day for me. So I will miss you. I love you. Best of luck. Keep in touch. Find me. Visit me. And I'll see you soon. All right, guys. You're the best. Take care and um, let me know if you have any questions.